Welcome to Dad Tech. Today we're reviewing the Sony RS5, built to be one of the most technologically advanced surround speakers to date. Does it fulfill those lofty claims? Let's find out. In name, the Sony RS5 is the next iteration up from Sony's RS3 surround speakers, made to complement their HCA5000 and HCA7000 flagship soundbar options. In actuality, the RS5s are not just an iterative step from the RS3s, they're a full evolution of Sony's surround sound technology made to leverage Sony's vaunted 360 degree spatial sound mounting system. There isn't a ton of differentiation from a stat sheet perspective. The RS3 sport 100 total watts of power compared to the RS5's 180 watts. Both have a six ohm impedance and both are capable of a frequency response between 200 hertz and 200 kilohertz. But the design language and the technology imbued into the RS5's signal Sony's most recent approach to home theater aesthetics, placement flexibility, and sound. From a design standpoint, Sony decided to move away from their omnidirectional block concept and cribbed heavily from the design cues of their very own HTA9, leaning towards a more cylindrical aesthetic. It isn't a full cylinder as the flat back ensures that you have the ability to easily mount the RS5s to the wall of your choice. The RS5 stands a shade under 10 inches tall and is roughly six inches in diameter, all weighing in at slightly over five pounds per speaker. I wouldn't necessarily call the RS5s unassuming surround speakers. On the bottom of the RS5 sits the AC power outlet, a link button for manual setup if for some reason the auto pairing failed, which thankfully I didn't have to test, and a closed port entry that is likely to be for Sony's proprietary diagnostics and servicing tools. You won't need to access this port and adhesive is used to keep this port closed. The exterior is enrobed in a dark gray cloth grille which covers the upfiring speakers, a soft dome tweeter, a wide array woofer, and dual passive radiators. Also behind the cloth grille are the status and battery LED indicators that tell you when the battery is charging, when the battery charge is completed, and when the batteries are depleted. These LEDs also indicate whether the speaker is in use or in standby mode. While we're on the subject, I do have to bring up a nitpicky nuance that I ran into during my testing of the RS5s. When in battery mode, meaning you've unplugged the RS5s from the AC outlet and are using them solely through the battery, the unit will go into an automatic standby mode once you turn off the soundbar it was connected to. After some time, the RS5s will turn off in an effort to conserve battery life, which makes total sense. The problem, however, is when you decide to turn the soundbar back on, there is no indication sent to the RS5s to power back up, causing you to have to manually turn on both units independently in order for them to begin working in conjunction with the soundbar again. For $700 speakers, you figured that it would at least be able to turn back on. Aside from that hassle though, the setup and pairing process with the soundbar is simple and intuitive. Plug the RS5s in and follow the on-screen instructions to pair it with the soundbar. Upon identifying the RS5s on initial setup, you're prompted to download the latest firmware and begin the 360 spatial sound mapping process. Additionally, you can do some manual adjustments in the menu that allow you to indicate the relative positioning of the speakers if you'd prefer to better dial in your seating position or increase the verticality of the speakers relative to your listening position. Additionally, pressing the optimize button on either one of the speakers can start the sound field optimization functionality, which is especially useful if you're repositioning the speakers around and don't want to navigate the on-screen menus to perform that optimization. And as I mentioned on my other Sony reviews that leverage the 360 spatial sound mapping, the post calibration demo is absolutely astonishing. So definitely don't miss that part. Beyond the technological capabilities built into the RS5s, Sony is hoping that placement flexibility and a more nuanced design aesthetic will help sway those with foregone conclusions of big black speaker boxes cluttering their living space and speaker wire strewn all over God's creation and more towards a home theater setup anchored by one of its flagship soundbars and surround speakers that blend into decor just like the RS5s. By making the RS5s chargeable, you're effectively doing away with the eyesore of a mounted wall speaker with cables dangling down toward the nearest AC outlet. And with Sony claiming a full 10 hours on a full charge, you won't require multiple charging sessions unless you're doing some heavy binging, which is exactly what I did with the RS5s. I sat down and binged through the entire fourth season of Netflix's Stranger Things on a fully charged RS5. I'm happy to say that with the soundbar volume situated a little more than 50%, I was able to get a smidge over nine hours of direct use before the LED indicators began telling me it was close to recharging. Time. Sony's claiming their fast charge process yields 90 minutes of use after 10 minutes of charge, but I didn't ultimately test that to ensure an uninterrupted binge session. From a sound perspective, it's important to note that surround speakers in particular are at the mercy of the source material you're utilizing. So I decided to pick some movies that would exemplify and accentuate the RS5's purported strengths. The RS5s provide a more distinct, crisp, dialed in directionality over its predecessor, the RS3s, and certainly well above what the standalone HCA5 or the HTA7000 can muster. Immersion is what you pay for when you decide to invest
invest in the RS5s as opposed to the approximation of immersion with the sole soundbar setup alone. Verticality, on the other hand, was slightly less distinct on the RS5s than, say, the HTA9s. Now, I don't have egregiously tall ceilings, and the HTA9s did a marvelous job of playing up the height of the sound during my testing with them. I just didn't get that same level with the RS5s, and it was a bit disappointing. This might have to do with the smaller up-firing speakers on the RS5s compared to the HTA9s, or potentially the way the HTA9s DSP algorithms work. I'm not sure. With music, it seems as though the rear speakers were an afterthought, with both the RS3s and RS5s playing such a backseat role that they almost felt neutered in comparison to the way the HTA9s approached music. Subtlety is one thing, almost imperceptible is another, and that's where the RS5 leaned towards in many of the tracks I put it up against. Overall, the RS5s are a big leap over its older brother, the RS3s. But at this price point, given what I've seen and heard Sony do with the HTA9 in terms of DSP processing with surround sound, the RS5s feel almost tame in comparison. Not having a way to calibrate how much pronouncement each of the speakers has really hamstring the RS5's capabilities, especially for those who want a more evident surround sound profile. The RS5s are a technologically niche product with a high-end price tag at $700. They are made for those who can't suffer the look of dangling wires and absolutely must have the cleanest setup with the best possible sound. Or it's for those that want the best possible complement to their Sony flagship soundbar system and are willing to pay a premium for the most immersion their surround speakers can bring to the table. For myself, at almost double the price of the RS3, the law of diminishing returns comes into play and I just can't justify a 100% price hike for a nominally better immersive experience, charging capabilities, and a sleeker design. Let me know down below if you're in the market for surround speakers and whether or not the RS5s are on your list. Check out my soundbar reviews here and like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more reviews like this and I will check you next time. Peace.